Hey everybody, Alicia here with Terra Drift. And yes, we're gonna dish all about the one ultralight tent from Austin-based small brand Gossamer Gear. We tested their 40 liter gorilla backpack this winter and we're pretty dang impressed. So we were like, uh, yeah, we gotta get our hands on more of this stuff. So we did, or rather I did, cause this, as the name implies, is a one person backpacking tent. Normally, Josh and I backpack together, but every once in a while, I go on a solo mission or hit the trail with a friend and want something a little smaller and lighter than our two-person Big Agnes Tiger Wall. And I had just such an occasion this March when I joined a friend on a fairly impromptu trip out to California's Catalina Island so that she and I could complete the Trans-Catalina Trail together. It was the perfect opportunity to test this ultralight tent because not only were we planning one 19-mile day over mountainous terrain, and I naturally wanted as little in my pack as possible, but I was also flying with my gear. And frankly, I hate checking luggage and paying to check luggage, especially when that luggage is a pack made of more delicate ultralight materials. But tent poles and stakes aren't likely to make it through TSA without getting confiscated. So the one was the perfect option. No tent poles. And to top it all off, I got to test this tent in pleasant weather, cool weather, in rain and extremely windy conditions, which we almost never get to do with one tent. So thanks Catalina for running us through the gamut. Anyway, let's start with the features. The one is obviously super duper light and small. I mean, I pulled this out of my pack and my through hiker companion even got excited about it. I mean, how could she not? Look at it. This is impressive. It weighs only 17.7 ounces and doesn't come with poles because you can use trekking poles to pitch it. You can buy dedicated segmented tent poles from Gossamer Gear if you don't usually hike with sticks, but I do, so this works perfectly. It comes with eight aluminum stakes. You need a minimum of six to pitch, a max of 12. We found eight to 10, a happy medium. Uh, guy lines and a stuff sack. There's one interior pocket and plenty of space by your head and your feet. In fact, the bathtub floor is 84 inches long, 33 inches wide at the head, and 21 inches wide at the feet. The ridge line, complete with attachable clothesline, is 43 inches across and offers 45 inches of headspace, and the tapered shape fits the 25 inch wide tapered sleeping pad very comfortably. There's one door and one vestibule, which has a waterproof zipper, and it offers an additional 10 square feet of storage space, like rad. The other side doesn't have a vestibule per se, more like an awning, but altogether it has a pretty spacious footprint. In fact, it required almost as much room to pitch as my friend's REI Flash two-person tent. But all packed up, it's all of 10 inches long and five inches wide, so <laughs> best of both worlds. As for the actual test, Testing, uh, it was a blast. I will say it took me about two practice pitches to get it right. It's not a freestanding tent after all, where you just slide in some poles and the perfect tent shape just materializes. On the contrary, with a single wall tent like this, meaning there's no separate fly to attach, you have to take a smidge more care to ensure stakes and guy lines are placed at the best possible angles to prevent saggy corners or awkwardly tight edges. But that comes pretty easily after a couple of pitches. Just stake the corners, insert trekking poles, and you're good. Like I said, the tent comes with eight stakes, which is not the absolute minimum, as with most ultralight tents. And while those eight will absolutely do the job in most conditions, in especially wet or windy weather, 10 to 12 seemed a bit more necessary. But more on that in a minute. The zippers on the door and vestibule were smooth and both sides kept rain out, even though the awning side doesn't seem like it goes down all that far. I mean, if wind happened to be blowing rain sideways, you could potentially have a problem, but otherwise you shouldn't have any issues. Same goes with the mesh vents near the floor. While there is a bathtub floor most of the way around that keeps out water, wind, and rain, and fabric guy outs extend well past the edges of the tent floor, the vent sections at the head and foot of the tent reduce the height of that floor to just a couple of inches. Now, those vents are very handy for airflow, obviously, but one night it rained steadily for hours and a little bit of muddy splatters made their way inside the tent via those vents. Not 
a lot of muddy splatters, and it's certainly no deal breaker. Just something to be conscious of if you're expecting a significant amount of heavy rain. Bring a few extra tent stakes to pull out every corner and you could mitigate most of that problem. The inside of the tent was surprisingly spacious. There was plenty of room for a person much larger than me to sit up and move around. This is not one of those one person tents that feels like a coffin. In fact, you can fit a tall pad and sleeping bag in here no problem and still have room to store your gear inside. If you have a regular size pad like me, well, I had enough room to bring in camp shoes, my pack, water bottles, stuff sacks. Literally everything I brought with me fit inside the tent. And that's just at the head and the foot of the tent. There was also loads of space around the edges, meaning I wasn't elbowing the tent walls all night. I mean, I had more room to move and store stuff in this one-person tent than Josh and I do in our two-person tent. It is made of more delicate, ultralight ripstop material, so it's not the sort of rugged, durable tent you can just throw around and bully to pieces. I do highly recommend getting yourself a footprint to protect the tent floor, but I'm fine with that when my tent weighs less than a liter of water. Anyway, I also appreciated how easy it was to tack back the vestibule cover and the big mesh door, and that you could not only open one side of the vestibule, but two. Because there's plenty of ventilation in this tent, both high and low, it's suitable for a wide range of temperatures. I did worry that the cooler temps would prove uncomfortable because of all that mesh, but the tent didn't feel as breezy as I thought it would in 45 degree temperatures. Even on windy nights, I really only felt a slight breeze, so I was super surprised. I mean, I'm not saying I would take this tent winter camping. It's still just a three season tent. But early spring and late fall? Yeah, yeah. I did wake up to a bit of condensation right near where I was exhaling on that coldest morning, but it wasn't even enough to collect and drip on me, so huge plus. That said, high winds did prove to be a little bit of an issue one night when beach camping. Gusts were between 30 to 40 miles per hour, and while I staked out the one as securely as I could, I even piled rocks on top of stakes. A trekking pole did collapse on me twice that night. It was easy to fix, I didn't even have to fully get out of the tent, but it was annoying. That said, my hiking buddy who has a similarly designed REI tent also had hers collapse in those same conditions, and sand is notoriously difficult to pitch in, so I would hardly call this a failure point of the one. It's more of a general hazard with ultralight single wall trekking pole pitched tents, which probably any hiker who uses them often will tell you. Plus, freestanding tents nearby were also bending under the pressure of the wind, and fellow backpackers with more conventional tents actually avoided the site altogether because of those winds. So again, I would still totally use this tent. Besides, I've seen freestanding tent poles snap in half in that kind of wind, which a trekking pole will not. So. Once more for good measure, not a flaw in my opinion. This tent may actually prove more robust than many freestanding tents in intense winds just because of the lack of poles. Plus, I stayed nice and dry during a full night of rain. Only my shoes, which were positioned near one of those floor vents, got a few specks of moisture on them. Long story short, I can wholeheartedly recommend the Gossamer Gear The One to anyone who wants an ultralight, ultra packable, exceptionally roomy tent that has all of the functionality you need without sacrificing any comfort. I mean, I may need to get the two just so Josh and I can revel in ultra light bliss together. Because why not? Honestly. In any case, I highly recommend you go check out the one from Gossamer Gear if you're looking to lighten your load when it comes to your backpacking tent. So we'll put a link to the tent in the description below. But before you go check it out, it would mean the world to us if you rang the bell and clicked subscribe. Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up while you're at it. That would be dope. Then follow along with Terra Drift, all of our adventures and gear reviews on Insta, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Terra Drift on all the socials. And if you want even more content like our favorite gear guides and destination highlights that you won't find here on YouTube, head over to TerraDrift.com and drop us a line and say hello while you're at it. Honestly, we love making new friends. 
And as always, thanks for watching. We hope you were both informed and entertained. Now get out there, pitch a tent, <laughs> tee giggle, and wander on. Just over a pound, guys. A pound for a tent. Yeah, yeah, you need a footprint as well in most conditions, I would say, but what is that like? Max a pound and a half? If you, if you get a really sturdy, really sturdy footprint, you know, otherwise you're really just adding a few ounces for a nice ultralight variety. Everybody in the campground will just stop, stare at you in jealousy because they just hiked over a mountain with a four pound tent in their pack. You have this. Uh, maybe I'm imagining things, but that's how I feel when I pulled it out of my pack. My Gossamer gear pack, which is also very small and very light, very comfortable. You should check out that review. I highly recommend it. You know what, just buy all the Gossamer gear things. Apparently, everything they make is great. I'm gonna go do that right now. I'm gonna take my tent with me, because I got my eyes on you. I see you staring at this. This one is mine. Thank you very much.